Hello and welcome to the 85th episode of Downtime Podcast. Alisa, how's it going? It is going well. We've reached the end of 2018. And what better way to celebrate 2018 than summarize everything we played this year? Yeah, as is our, I guess, annual tradition now. We're going to talk about games that we played, games that we hope to play, uh, and everything underneath that umbrella. Pretty much. Um, if you're listening to this, this probably comes out either on New Year's Eve or the day before New Year's Eve. So, you know, let's leave everything in 2018 as is and get ready for the new year. All right. I guess to start off, so we this list is basically the same list that we had last year. If you listen to our Game of the Year 2017 podcast, we have like some new categories, but for the most part, it's the same exact thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's quite a list of things on mine. How about you? <laughs> I did my best to limit it because uh, if I talked about everything this would be a really long podcast i will say though dang i played a lot of things this year more than i was expecting yeah me too i thought totally. this year would be more controlled and it wasn't <laughs> yeah i i look at my list of games that are on my shelf and i realize how many of them i purchased this year yeah there's a lot i also told myself this year i was going to limit the amount of physical copy games that i bought Turns out that, like, half the games that I bought are freaking physical copies. But I will say the reason is because the physical copy was way cheaper than the digital. So. Yeah, and that's that's okay. I mean, it's it's always been that way, and it's not probably not going to change in the near future. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, so the... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, and then on top of that, I dabbled into Gamefly and, you know, I also got, like, more games than I was expecting from there, too. It's just, like, it... It added up. <laughs> oh no, totally. I, I mean, I got a Switch this year. Um, the, I mean, everything changed for me. I just started buying Switch games pretty much this year, so th- that's a whole new realm that I was diving into. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. But let's get started. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's go. Uh, not really an order that we uh texted to each other, but more of like I guess whatever order. That we feel like. So if I could start, Elisa. Go for it. Um, what are your top three favorite games that didn't come out in 2018? All right. So I will try to go through this as quickly as possible. Yeah. So, um, and so this category for myself um, are games that came out, I want to say, last. they came out last year. And one of them came out in 2016, I think. Mm -hmm. so my top three games not from 2018 so i gotta give the shout out yakuza 5 one of my favorite games that i played this year it would be in my top three if if we combined everything i see um i think as i'm not going to talk too much into this because of recent podcasts but this is my favorite yakuza game of all time the concept of playing with five main characters I thought was going to be really hectic, but I ended up having a wonderful time. And the way that all the storylines integrated and came together was really enjoyable. And I enjoyed playing with Kiryu, you know, Haruka, Sajima, Akiyama, and then the new character, Shinada, who got added. I liked the three locations of... Um, Fukuoka, Sapporo, and Nagoya that they added. I think uh, their respective names are Nagasugai, Tsukumino, and Kineicho. Um, fun storyline. You know me. I really like ensemble casts of anything in entertainment. So that's one of the reasons why I also enjoyed this. And also, I think best side games of the Yakuza series for sure. Like, you... I'm. I was a fucking J-pop idol star. I was a. Ta- <laughs> I, I was a taxi driver. I. I was collecting debts. I was playing baseball, and I was like hunting for bears. 
which was probably the least favorite one, but still, it was it was still a good game. Yeah, I I, I was gonna say that I felt like five would be probably be your favorite game since a lot of it centered around Haruka being a J-pop idol and a lot of musical rhythm rhythm games. Hell to the yes, <laughs> so good, so good. I got those songs on my i on on my music now. <laughs> Were you gonna say iPod? <laughs> I was gonna say i no, I was actually gonna say iPhone. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, if it's okay if you say iPod, some of us still have iPods. Oh no, no, I was gonna say iPhone, but ah. um, I also listen to it on my laptop as well. So, sweet, sweet. Yeah. Um, what is one of the games that you liked? Not from 2018. I played Titanfall 2 this year, and I loved it. I loved it so much. I I feel like Titanfall 2 is one of the games that definitely shined way past other a lot, a lot of other titles um when it came out um unfortunately it was released at the same time as uh, what was the other game that was released there was another game that overshadowed it um yeah it was like trying to kill it what um do you happen to know what date it came from yeah it, it was released in um on october 28th 2016 I mean, uh, technically, Final Fantasy came out right at that time, but I don't know if that's the one. It did come out during that date, though, too. Yeah, there there was another game that overshadowed Titanfall 2's release, and that's the reason why the game didn't do well. Mm. Um, uh, uh, oh, no, you know what it was? It was uh, Battlefield 1. Battlefield 1 released oh. at the same time as Titanfall 2, Got and it. everyone was jumping on Battlefield, and no one wanted to play Titanfall. Okay, okay. Uh, and I was like, wow, that sucks, because Titanfall 2 is such a great game. The story is really interesting. It's the first time Titanfall has ever had a story. Um, the first Titanfall game didn't have any single-player aspect to it. There was a story, yes. And I, I'm backtracking, sorry. I meant that, that Titanfall 2 does not have a single-player aspect, a single-player campaign. Uh, Titanfall 1 didn't have it. It was multiplayer only, strictly multiplayer. Titanfall 2 is both multiplayer and single-player, so it was really cool to have a story. Um uh, playing this game and like kind of like learning how to play the game at the same time instead of just jumping into the foray and getting shot and killed <laughs> but um yeah uh i had a lot of fun playing titanfall 2 um there's a lot of really cool um uh, things about the game that i want to uh, go back and play again i don't know if there's a lot of people playing the game still i haven't been on the game in a while but uh yeah i titanfall 2 is definitely on my list of top three games that didn't come out this year but i liked a lot uh, next on my list is uh, my favorite game to pronounce. Yes. Eight. Yeast? Yeast? S. Yeast? <laughs> Yeast. Uh-huh. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> the end. End podcast. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> um... So, Lacrimosa of Dana was my first time ever playing an East game. I think, okay, I think it is actually pronounced East. Um, I will say, as you all know, I complained a lot about the localization and the dub, and it was super campy, and sometimes I was just questioning, like, how, who says that? <laughs> who translated yeah. this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same time... I really enjoyed this game a lot. I enjoyed the storyline about primordials, and I liked a lot of the side characters that you learned about, uh, Loxia, Dana. Um, I liked the I liked the idea of a community uh, camp building mechanic where you have to improve your camp. I played quite a few of those this year, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. um, it was a really fun and exciting JRPG action and the battle system was good, and I liked that it was active battle, um, and then, you know, the misadventures of Adol and Dogi being shipwrecked for the eighth time was great. Wow. <laughs> the eighth time. And, yeah, good game, good game. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, did you pay a lot of money for this game when it came out? Uh, no, because I played this on Vita because this year was the game I wanted to y utilize my Vita before it um became obsolete. I'm pretty sure I only paid like 
nineteen dollars for this. It wasn't that bad. That's good. Yeah, it was a pretty st- pretty standard old JRPG price. Ah, okay. Because I know that some games like Octopath Traveler have that same kind of feel to it, but they're a little bit more expensive. I yeah, the one that's on Switch, right? Yes. Yes. Hmm. I was interested in that game actually. Um. Until I found out it was only on Switch, and you know, obviously, I don't have a Switch, but it it intrigued me when I first read about it. <laughs> yeah, everyone's been giving it pretty rave reviews. So if you do happen to find a Switch one day, Elisa, for a great price, or or you just get gifted one, I'd recommend Octopath Traveler for your library. Sounds good. Yeah, I I think I've decided if when and if I get a Switch, I'm probably gonna wait for the next um, iteration of it, the version two, to come out for the Switch. They said that they probably won't create a version two of the Switch. Like this is the only version. Oh, that this is confirmed. Create. Yeah, uh, Nintendo came out and said that this is the only version of the Switch that will be released. They're not going to do like Switch XL or anything like that. So, if you want to get a Switch, this is it. Oh, okay, cool. Well, then all I got to then I'm just going to wait for the price to drop exponentially. There you go. Yep. There you go. Um. One of the games that I liked this year that didn't come out, and I played a lot of, is Overcooked. Hey, Overcooked. And for those that don't know, Overcooked is a cooking game where you and three other friends get together, collect ingredients, chop the ingredients, and put them all into a recipe and serve it. And it might sound easy on paper, but in reality, it's a lot of yelling, stressed out people, not knowing what to do, people running around, confused. Um... It's a really simple game with a really deep concept, and I love it so much. I spent a lot of time playing this game this year. We got um, up to the ghost level or the haunted mansion level. Yeah, no, I think we got up to space. Were you there? When we oh got my up to god, space? we did get up to space. Sorry. Yeah, I was like, wait a second, we went, we got we past went up all to the ghosts. Space stuff. where you can make some burritos, <laughs> <laughs> which doesn't make any sense. I know. But <laughs> it's so cool. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. Yeah, uh, Overcooked is an awesome game. Can't wait to play Overcooked 2 um, in 2019. The game is currently on sale on the PlayStation Store for $17, so please pick that up if you haven't. Um, And if you love the first one, definitely pick up the second one. You don't really need to play the first one if you haven't played it, and if you just are are interested in buying the second one. There is an overarching story, but I'd say the game's focus is not so much the story, but more of the... Uh, the levels, the design of the levels, and the ability to cook things. Yes. Uh, but yeah, that's it. That's the that's my second choice for this year of game a game that didn't come out that I love so much. Awesome, and that game is great. I was Ugh, thinking yeah. about that game too when I was making this list. Um, yeah, super solid game. If super fun, like couch co op, fun party game, like for any occasion, yeah. in my opinion. <laughs> Absolutely. Ooh, absolutely. Last on my list is a game where I have written down here, if this game, if I played this game in 2017, this game would have been my game of the year. Okay. So um, on my li- my last choice of my favorite game that was not from 2018, I have Nier Automata. And, okay. Um, definitely one of the most heart-wrenching most emotional games I played this year, if not the most emotional game that I played this year, and probably combined with last year as well. Um, this game took a very different turn than I was ever expecting this game to go. Um, I had so much fun playing this game, learning about the characters to be a two. There was so much depth, and I like the way that the story was told in, I want to say five different yeah five different chapters and it was just um a very different game and i really liked that and um i liked how depending on your character there were different battle systems and um yeah definitely one of my favorite games of this year the last game on my list um is a Multiplayer game that I've talked about a lot in the past, and this is a multiplayer game that I feel like definitely deserves to be on this list because, for me, 
Uh, I, I did min- mention Titanfall 2, but this game is actually one that I like more than Titanfall 2 simply because of the multiplayer, the, the large scale multiplayer battles that it has. And that game is Rising Storm 2 Vietnam. Ooh, I quite nice. A, I talked quite a bit about this game on a previous podcast. And you can have 32 versus 32 match battles. Um, you can have little, little smaller scale battles. Uh, the American team has vehicles. The Viet Cong team has uh, anti anti vehicle weapons, basically. Like like the American teams have helicopters, but the the Vietnamese team they have uh, rocket launchers and anti air support. Yeah, very so, true to the actual war. Yeah, and everything about it was I would say too historically accurate because there are some things in there you can do that you that not everyone did, obviously. But mm-hmm. it's it's a game, you know. At the end of the day, it's a video game made by a company that's trying to make money. Yeah. So. At its heart, it's it's a piece of entertainment that I think is a lot of fun. There are a lot of different um, ways to play the game. Uh, it's all about teamwork, coordination, having a great leader, having a great team. Um, I've played on a lot of shitty matches where the leaders just either weren't there mentally or they just didn't want to be the leader and were just running out into the field and getting shot. Definitely. So you, there's, there's a lot of different ways to play the game, again, but... Once you win the game, it feels good. Like there's no, there's no like digital rewards. I'd say except for cosmetic things. But everyone, everyone starts with every gun, um, every gun choice. Sorry, um, or and and every gun variant. Mm-hmm. But if you want cosmetic items, then you play the game to get all the cosmetic items. And I think that's a way some like the video ge- like multiplayer video games should be made. Unlike you know when Battlefront Two first came out, everyone was up in arms about Battlefront having. Trans- like loot box transactions yeah. and using real re- using real money and it started this whole fiasco with EA people mm-hmm. boycotting the game and so of course no one wants to go down that path and I feel like Tripwire the developers of uh, Rising Storm 2 definitely made the right choice in having everything unlocked except for the cosmetic items which do nothing in the game except make you look cooler and better etc cetera, etc cetera. so yeah again Rising Storm 2 is probably Definitely on this list because I, I enjoyed all, quite a bit of it after playing it for so long th- this year. And it came out last year, I believe. Um, so, yeah, that's my top. Those are my top three games of that didn't come out in 2018. All right. Let's move on to favorite multiplayer of 2018. Wow. There, there, are, there are three contenders on my list and they're all vastly different. Um, Let me yeah, go first gonna... because I only have yeah. one. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, go ahead. And this is, and you know, you all know, I just, uh, I don't play too many multiplayers. Sure, sure. Yeah, and um, I just put Monster Hunter World because if I had to assess everything that I played, this is really the only multiplayer that I dabbled in, and I played a lot of the multiplayer beta. Like I, I, I almost finished the multiplayer beta when that came out last year, and then this year I dabbled in like one to two matches actually just last week for the first time (laughs) Mm -hmm. and um i was playing with my cousin and it was like three in the morning this was the time when i told you i drank boba um (laughs) 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 and uh yeah one thing that i will say is the multiplayer uh, so monster hunter world in itself is a pretty big learning curve in trying to defeat monsters because it's not just attacking monsters and they die there's like a method to the madness you have to consider your weapon all of these different things and, uh-huh. and when you play multi and you have to prep like you have to bring all these items and when you have multiplayer it's like that and you have to have the consideration of the people with you so when i played um, I've never played a random battle yet. I've only played a match with someone that I knew. So if my cousin, I played with Kevin. Um, it's on top of that, like, it's not one of those things where your team is automatically protected. Like, I can accidentally hit one of my team members. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's 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 pretty it's pretty hard to maneuver. But I will say that it was a very fun multiplayer, and I like how the multiplayer is. You have to help each other you are a team versus you're against each other um there's Uh, one more yeah there's one more multiplayer i like to mention but that i'll save that for a different category okay yeah okay yeah um i picked three (laughs) yeah go for it 
Yeah, and uh, so one of them's a co-op game, and that game is A Way Out. Dude, I knew you were going to mention A Way Out. I, who knows? <laughs> you might even mention A Way Out like two times on this podcast. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, A Way Out is definitely one of my favorite multiplayer games. And, and I, by multiplayer for this category, I wasn't thinking online or local. Well, technically it's local, and you can play online co-op, but I was thinking of a co-op game. I wanted to add a co-op game to this list. Yeah. And A Way Out is definitely one of my favorite narrative-driven uh, multiplayer co-op experiences I've ever had. Awesome. Uh, uh, for those that don't know, A Way Out is a story-driven cooperative game told in like a cinematic style. I can't tell you too much about the game because I don't want to spoil it, but once you play it the first time... There's a part of you that wants to go back and play it again just to see the different endings. Mm-hmm. Um, I, for one, loved the ending to this game. I loved everything about this game. Um, it's just, I wish that the voice acting wasn't so weird. And I <laughs> did mention this before. <laughs> the uh, They're all like Swedish people trying to have American accents. Right. And it just, it sounds too forced. And my brother and I made so much fun of it when we when we started playing it. We're like, this is horrible. This is everything that they're doing is just terrible. Um, but the game itself, the way it's presented, the graphics, the voice, the, the the voice quality, the story, it's great. Everything about the game is great, and I highly recommend it to everyone that you guys should check it out. It's a really, it's a fun little game. Uh, the other two games on my list are Super Mario Party for obvious reasons. Yep. Be- Super Mario Party is just a really fun couch multiplayer board game i i I like to akin it to a board game everyone thinks super mario party is just a video game but i have to say no it's it's a virtual board game in more ways than one i think it's it's a really fun way to get closer to people to make to make enemies um to have drinking parties it's 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 a really well-rounded mario party i think this is the best mario party in a long time and yeah i I really enjoyed playing Super Mario Party. I still enjoy playing Super Mario Party, even though I unlo- unlocked all the characters. It's it's still fun to play with a lot of people. So, uh, yeah, you w- go back and play it. Or if you are thinking about buying it, I'd say just pick it up. It's it's a great it's a great game for sure. Uh, and the last game on my list, it's kind of a surprise, it's kind of a shocker. It's actually Player Unknown's Battlegrounds Mobile Edition. Hey. And, and the reason why I chose this game is because earlier this year, my cousins and I, they introduced me to the game. So I wanted to keep playing it with them almost every weekend, almost like like three times a week we would play the game together and, and we would spend like a couple hour sh- sessions on the weekend playing this game. Uh, it's just the stripped down version of PUBG for your phone. It's a great little game. You... Uh, you and a squ- it's it's like the it's older brother the original PUBG on PC. You and a squad of three other people go to a giant island and you have to survive. It's a it's a battle royale game and it's probably the only hardcore battle royale game I'll ever play. Yeah. I'm not super into uh Call of Duty or that or PUBG or Fortnite or um the CS:GO <laughs> the Counter Strike <laughs> Go uh battle royale edition. I just yeah it's. It was just a lot of fun playing this game. There were like vehicles and and realistic guns and um yeah, it was just it was a lot of fun collaborating with my cousins and and my brother and just all of us together playing this game and I'm so sad that you know those memories are are just memories now and we don't get to play it anymore, but uh, I think that we ended it at a, at a good time since um you know, things start to get old after a while. Yeah. But definitely um, always in the memories, especially something that's associated with family and having a good time. Absolutely. I agree. Um, let's go on to least favorite game of 2018. What was yours, Alisa? Oh, man. My least favorite game of 2018 was Nino Kuni 2. Ah, you've expressed this before. Yeah, that game... The game didn't suck. I, w- I was about to be very reactionary. The game didn't suck. But it was a v- very much a disappointment. I was not... A, um, I really do think that the downfall... The pitfall of this game was the fact that it wasn't developed or associated with Studio Ghibli in any way. 
Not to mm-hmm. say that it needed it. It's just that the storyline really suffered. Like, I, I felt like it was all over the place. JRPGs are already all over the place. So the fact that a JRPG is, like, completely, like, you know, not not out there, but it's just, like, not cohesive. I didn't really enjoy it. And what what was disappointing is the kingdom builder mechanic and the aspect of that game was awesome. Like, it's so cool how you can build your own kingdom and get people to join um uh ding dong dell but it it's just the rest of the game couldn't support that or like make up for that awesome part of it everything else was just not that good and i did not like the two main characters evan and roland all too much um and yeah that is my least favorite game of 2018 um what was the biggest factor for you to put this on the on the list or make make this the only game on the list? Um So for me, I enjoyed quite a lot of games in 2018. I don't think I'm that hard of a person to impress. I I'm pretty understanding when I play a lot of things. Um this oh and another thing is that i felt that this game just had no challenge to it this is it's like mm-hmm. it's as if this game was made for like young jrpgers who don't know how to how to play it whereas nino kuni 1 was developed and even though it, like all ages could play it like there was some challenge to it mhm yeah mm-hmm. This is, I think, the biggest factor of Nino Kuni two being bad was, um, it's just the the gameplay and the storyline. Right, right, right. Yeah. That's fair. That's a fair assessment. Yeah. For me, I have to admit this. I every game I played this year, I didn't hate. There's nothing that I was like, this is the. Just cause yeah. three of this of this year, you know. Um, <laughs> so, so it's pretty hard for me to choose a game that I didn't like, but I will have to say, um, a game that did come out this year that I that I kind of didn't like after a while would have to be PUBG Mobile because simply because it's hard to play games on your phone, and I've always been against playing video games on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but when PUBG Mobile did come out and my cousins wanted to play it, there was no other choice but to play it. So yeah. we. I so I did. Um it's definitely on your phone, it's definitely not a game that is easy to control coming from someone that plays a lot of games with a controller or a mouse and keyboard. Mm-hmm. Um there are a lot of games that I there are a lot of um things about the game that I didn't like, like such as lag, um uh like glitching. Like it just didn't feel like a like a finished game. And then after a while, um there's like there's this learning curve where uh, you have to understand a lot of the unspoken rules or a lot of the un- unspoken or a lot of the things that everyone knows that probably you won't probably you don't know um for example you don't go to military base it's full of weapons and everyone goes there so everyone avoids it but then there are f- a select few people, people that go no one's going to tell you that so if you land at military base and you're like oh my god i found a weapon and then you get shot like why did i get shot so fast well because yeah. a lot of other people dropped there um there are a lot of the people that we played with that were randoms that were just annoying. Um, yeah, it's it was just like a cesspool of horrible things that just came together. <laughs> um, but again, I, I, I mentioned previously that this is on my list of top three multiplayer games of 2018, and it's because of the, com- the camaraderie. The camaraderie over over uh, Discord to play this game and to complete it um, by competing, by like, winning matches. Like my cousins and I and my brother, we all won a lot of matches together. But um, yeah, there were a, there were some that we lost as well for stupid reasons because we couldn't look down and pick something up, like because our controls were too slow. <laughs> um, yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's just there's just all those things coming together really made this both an enjoyable, but I'd say more so uh, uh, unenjoyable experiments overall. For sure. But yeah, again, I stress that I, there were no games that I hated this year. It was more, this was a game that I had a lot of aspects that I liked the least. Mm-hmm. 
So I think we should go on to uh, games we want to play from 2018 that we haven't played yet, because this is just a going like a breezing through of, of the list, and then our final category we could talk about. Yeah. Um, so after. the two games that I want to play, that, uh, the or two games that I want to play that came out in 2018 is one God of War, which is still staring at me right now, and two yep. uh, Dragon Ball Fighters. Um, so Dragon Ball Fighters, I looked up for the first time how to actually say the name. It is just Fighters, like the regular way of saying Fighters. You don't say Fighter Z, or you don't emphasize the Z like Fighters, like Fighters. Really? It's actually people just, say Fighter Z. I don't know why. It makes you know when I first read the title, it makes sense if you want to read Fighter Z just because the Z is capitalized. In fact, I'm right, kind of right. disappointed by the real pronunciation of this game. <laughs> like, why isn't it Fighter Z? <laughs> I know. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Fighter Z does sound epic. Um, those are the two games that I want to play. Oh, and then uh, Spider Man. Um, I want to play that game as well. Yeah. 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 Uh, for me, there's actually quite a few, and I'm not going to go into detail. I'm just going to tell you the titles, and you're going to be like, oh, those are games. So uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, Battlefield 5, Far Cry 5, Hitman 2, Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee, Spyro, Celeste. I need to finish Celeste, by the way. Um, Vampire, Kirby All-Star Allies for the Switch, Overcooked 2, Spider-Man, God of War, Sea of Thieves, and Fallout 76. Nice. Oh, Overcooked 2. Add that to my list. That's a good one. Yeah, that's... Oh. I've heard nothing but good things about that game, and I cannot wait to buy it in 2019 for the PS4. Oh, totally. Yeah. Um. So, last category, honorable honorable mentions 2018. We limited it to two games. What are your two honorable mentions of 2018? All right. So, my honorable mentions of... I will read them in order as if, like, they're fifth place and fourth place. Sure, sure. So, I fifth place goes to Shadow of the Colossus the remake mm-hmm. that came out mm-hmm. at the beginning of this year. Um, although I acknowledge that the mechanics were not that great because it's based off of the original PlayStation game. Um, this was a very satisfying game to play. And I liked how killing each of the 16 Colossi had a different strategy to it that you had to employ. And in terms of the storyline, it was much more of a floating, like a floating story that really came together at the end. Uh, I still have mixed opinions of it, but I, it, the shock value and the surprise was definitely there. Um, just the whole concept of how you have to defeat these huge monsters and some of them are in the air. Some of them are like they crawl in the Colosseum. Some of them are huge some of them are like a really small like dinosaur looking thing but it ends up being like a really fast thing that like headbutts you all the time some of them are yeah yeah. some of them are in the water it it was a very very creative all of these different boss battles so that's my number five or that's an honorable mention which would also be my fifth place awesome Awesome. And by the way, I did say that this is the last category, and I'm wrong. We actually didn't talk about our top three favorite games of 2018. Hey! So this is actually our second to last category that we're talking about. So we're going backwards in a way. We're talking about honorable mentions first, but I think it's fair because um, uh, it's, you know, we, we don't want to spoil the surprises at the very end. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so my one of my honorable mentions... Which you said your fifth, right, or your fourth? This one would technically be my fifth place. My okay. fifth favorite ga- game of two thousand eighteen. Right, 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 right. Um, did this game come out in two thousand eighteen? Hold on, I'm just double checking something. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, it didn't. Oh, oops. <laughs> um, okay. Anyways, um. Uh, my, one of my honorable mentions is actually uh, A Way Out. And that's because it's a game that I, I mentioned this before. It's a game that tells you a story through from a cinematic multiplayer perspective. Um, 
this I is a game this that game I was going to be on your list. I was waiting for it. I was like, I wonder where he's yeah. going to put this. It's it, it can't be game my top game one of my top games of 2018 um, simply because of some of the things that confused me uh, and distracted me such as the voice acting huh. but it is one of my honorable mentions and it did come out it did come out this year there, another game on my list that I removed is actually not from this year but <laughs> uh, this is this game did come out this year um, again it was a really great co-op experience you know you're bonding you're bonding you're bonding with whoever you're playing with and I do recommend you play this whole game with someone that throughout the whole game like you. By that I mean like you don't don't change who you're playing this game with because it will make the ending sour. Mm. Like you have to play this game with someone from the ver- very beginning to the very end and you'll understand why. For but sure. But that's all I can say. That's all I can say. For sure, for sure. My last yeah. game in honorable mentions which would be my fourth place is uh Yakuza Kiwami 2. Oh. And we just recorded a podcast two episodes ago on the storyline. Um, we This is actually one of the most recent games that the both of us has played. So we talked about it in a lot of detail. But yeah, this game's bomb. This is a good ass game. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got to yeah. say. It's freaking good. It's it's good. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't argue with that. Uh, I can see why you put it there. It's definitely one of the... One of the the stronger Yakuza titles. There's like there's a clear goal w- within the game. Um, there's there's just something about the game that just makes you want Kiryu to win. You know, there's yes. Like, you know he's good. You know he's gonna he's you know he's going to win. But there are times when he struggles, and you're like, you know what? Get out, damn it, Kiryu! Like you could do this. You could do this. Like you're showing weakness, but it's fine. You know, <laughs> and it's it's amazing. Like it's it's a very it's a very good storytelling experience that I think that. Any Yakuza fan will enjoy, even if you haven't, you know, started the series from Kiwami or Zero. I think you'd still enjoy Yakuza Kiwami too, as as a, as a single game. Um, you don't have to know who all the characters are. You just have to know that um, this is a great story. But you will be lost if you just join Yakuza Kiwami two from from nothing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and my last honorable mention game on my list is Celeste. And I put Celeste on here because I think it's a really great platformer. I haven't beaten it yet, but I do plan to finish it in 2019. It's on my it's on my queue, my to do list. Um, uh, yeah, I can't say much about it yet since I haven't finished it. But um, I'm putting it on the list even though I haven't finished it because it's simply just a wonderful, wonderful, cute little game. Um, despite the difficulty level of the game, I think it's really unique um, as a platformer. Um, it's nothing like Super Meat Boy or anything like um, Super Mario 64, and I'm putting those two together because, like, to me, those are vastly different kinds of platformers. Um, Super Meat Boy is more of like in the in the, the harder realm, and um, Super Mario 64 is not hard per se, but more precision control and a little bit easier. Uh, so yeah, Celeste is. A, I also uh, like the uh, color. I like the mentions. color choices in Celeste. Me too. I like how. Um, the palette is more is colder and like some of the only warmer things are like Celeste's hair, mm-hmm. for example, and it really makes the game kind of stand out um, from a visual perspective. Uh, there's a really there's a story that's really cute. I haven't really gone too much into it yet, but I know that. Um, uh, I mean, by cute, I don't mean like it's adorable, but more like this is this is something that I want to keep playing. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, that, that's my uh, that's on my list. Awesome. I'm just curious, what's the game that was on your list that was did wasn't from 2000? It was Super Mario. It was Super Mario Odyssey. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Sh- um, shout out but, to Super Mario Odyssey. You can talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I did. I did before. It's um. It's a game that is. A lot like Super Mario 64, it harkens back to it, but it's its own unique experience. Uh, there's a whole storyline of Mario having uh, Princess Peach taken from him again. Bowser takes Peach to marry her, and it's up to Mario to save the day. But he every attempt he does in trying to save Peach, he always gets shot down, literally, um, from a ship in the sky. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah, it's it's a really cool and fun experience. Um, it's probably the best platformer on the Switch right now. 
Um, I would have to say nothing could beat Super Mario. No, nothing could beat Nintendo at their own game. For sure. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I did talk about it kind of in detail before, but I have to just stress and reiterate that this game is probably my my favorite from this year. From one of my favorite platformers from this year that that came out last year. Very nice. Yes. All right. Down to the final category, which is our three favorite games of 2018 that came out in 2018. Yeah. um... And I will say, to your point, there were a lot of really good games that came out this year. Yeah. I honestly, I think more, I think I enjoyed this year more than I did last year. And I thought that last year couldn't be topped. I definitely had a lot more fun playing video games this year than last year. Yeah. Um, Simply because, I don't know, there's just a lot more exciting things that came out for me. Yeah. Um, For whatever reason, I came into this year thinking, oh, this is going to be a pretty chill, easy year. And then it, I, I noped pretty fast. Yeah, that's what we, I think that's what we talked about last year. We're like, oh, this is 2018 is going to be a breeze, no worries. And yeah. now we're like, Jesus, this is a, this is a deep year. It turns There's out a lot of how the shit came out this year. <laughs> I know. Yeah, like what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, had, I actually ended up playing a lot of non 2018 games this year, such as Serious Sam, um, Bigfoot. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there are a lot of things that I couldn't put on this list and just lists in general since they didn't come out this year. For sure, uh, for sure. Yeah, but yeah, again, yeah. Even though the games didn't come out this year, I just felt like I had a lot more enjoyable video games um, this year than last year. Definitely. Agreed. Colors weave into a spire of flame Distant sparks call to a one of my top three games of 2018, and I'm going by three, by the way. This is my third favorite game from this year, uh, is Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And it's on the list, even though it came out recently, because as you guys might may know or may not know, whenever a Nintendo console comes out, my mind is always like, where's Smash? Um, I was wondering I, where this was going to be. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's up there because, oh man, I, I just can't get enough of Smash. Like, it's... It's a really great party fighting game. Um, I'm glad that right now it's being taken seriously before, of course, everyone's like, oh, Smash is just like a fun children's game or a fun fun video game to play at parties. You don't have to be good at it. But then, of course, Melee changed all that. And in recent years, um, the pro circuits have taken notice of Melee and Smash as a whole. So they've included that. And I, I really like the culture behind Smash. Um, the, the, the fact that it brings all these not just Nintendo characters, but third party characters together to fight is just, is really cool. And I put it as number three on my top three list because again, whenever a Nintendo com- console comes out, I always want Smash to be on it. And I've said that since I got Smash, I, I got a Switch at the beginning of this year. And even before that, when I, I mentioned that I, there were like five different, there were five games that I was waiting for to come out on the Switch that hadn't been announced yet. And now that all five are released or have been announced it's like you know what what i'm glad that i own a switch basically yeah. what, what what other reason would there be to not own a switch if everything i love um was already announced or released so uh super smash brothers again is one of my all-time favorite fighting games slash party games um i have a long history with it uh within not just my immediate immediate family with my brother but also with cousins um so smash holds a special place in my heart and unfortunately it's very biased uh, for, of me to say this, but yeah, I think that um, it's on this list because I love it so much. Not just because it's a, an amazing game, but also because I love it so much. Which which means uh, it's like I think that means it's a good, it's an amazing game though, because this is like from your perspective. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And this podcast is all about our opinions and perspectives. So you're absolutely right, Elisa. I was expecting the, this to be number one, actually. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You, you'll, you will not be surprised by number one. Oh, for sure. <laughs> number three for me is Valkyria Chronicles 4. It was nice. a vast improvement from Valkyria Chronicles 1. Uh, this game made me care about every single character, almost, that was in this game, which is funny because when I 
first started this game, I was like, alright, let's just get through this. <laughs> There's too many things to play. And I ended up, like, almost doing everything that you could, poss you could possibly do. And I spent a lot of late nights trying to finish this game. But it's it's just good. This is my top. This is for sure my favorite JRPG of the year. Nice. Very yes. nice. Oh, and then once again, this is I liked that this was a strategy game too. A different type of mechanic and battle system. Yes. Cool, I know. Uh, I know you y'all were talking about it on the Discord and I couldn't follow along since I had no idea what you guys are talking about. <laughs> but but yeah, no, it seems like a lot of people are playing this game and a lot of people are enjoying it. So um, yeah, I, I'm not surprised that's on your list, to be honest. Yeah, it's uh, definitely, I think this game for sure was overshadowed by quite a few. Uh, name, Namely, I think Sp spider it, it came between Spider-Man and Red Dead. So I, it was completely understandable. And this was also, like you know, JRPGs aren't so advertised here. But this is solid, very solid game. My number two is Just Cause Four. No, I'm just kidding. It's uh. Oh it's my god! Yakuza I was Kiwami like, about, I was about to say plot twist. How no, the no, hell no, did no. that happen? I never played it. I did. I didn't even talk about it <laughs> during the, any of the podcasts. Anything could have um, happened since the last time we talked. <laughs> yeah, could have had a change of heart, you know. Yeah. Um, it's actually uh, Yakuza Kiwami Two is my number two because it's Yakuza Kiwami Two. <laughs> watch our watch our spoiler cast if you don't know why. Yeah, <laughs> so good, so good. Yeah, so good. Okay. Uh, what about your number one? Wait, I didn't go number two yet. Oh, sh my bad. <laughs> What's your number two? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> it's all good. My, um, oh my god, what are we doing? Number two. Sorry, I'm I confused myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number two is Monster Hunter World. Hey. Solid game. Once again, monster hunting is so much freaking fun. Um, I will say this game has a big learning curve, um, as I talked about earlier. And it's a game that punishes you if you don't have your shit together. And it's a game that also punishes you if you're not willing to train in different weapons and if you're not patient. But if you're all of that, then this game is the best. So that's my number two. Had such a good time playing it. I'm really su so when I look up all the stuff on Monster Hunter throughout this year, I, I didn't know that this was kind of like the breakout year that it became really well known internationally. Mm -hmm. I know it was always on Nintendo DS and like all these different platforms, but it's cool that this game that Cap Capcom was able to come out with a game that got noticed and yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So, yay! <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Yep. And uh, I would I'd say at its heart, what from what it sounds like, uh, Monster Hunter World is a game where uh, work hard, play hard, high reward. Yeah, definitely high reward for sure. Okay, okay. Cool, cool. And so, my number one, the award for Jeremy's number one game of the year, 2018, goes to Yakuza 6, The Song of Life. Hey! And if you want to know why, you can watch our Yakuza 6 spoiler cast. But to give a gist of it, it's a great ending to a long story that's been told over many many years yeah definitely so, um and literally like 10 years i'd say like 11 years 11 years of telling this long story and it finally came to an end even for... longer than that i know the first game came out in 2005 so uh 13 yeah, years oh i miscalculated <laughs> <laughs> i can't do math um yeah, it's been 13 years. It's been a long journey for the Yakuza franchise, and this is 
an ending point, not not the final Yakuza game, but one of many, I hope, ending points for the series. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's a different chapter from here on out. Yeah. Also, I've never bought a super special premium edition of a game before, and then this is my first time. Yeah. And it's so cool. Because Same they here. Have the, and it was like the, such I, a good collector pack too like i don't think i've ever had one that had legit useful items yeah i mean the cups are the things that i like the most the cups the coasters and the ice stones yeah it's so useful so cool yeah i still drink out of them to this day but you know rarely because i don't want to mess them up but yeah uh, that's my number one for this year elisa's number one game of 2018 is a game that she just actually just finished um I want to say eight hours ago. <laughs> Ooh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Fresh off the press. Fresh off the press. Can't believe that happened. Oh, it was a late night. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Oh, my God. You're going to go crazy. It was a late night. <laughs> But anyways, uh-huh. Red Dead Redemption 2 is my favorite ah, game of the year. Nice. Um, yeah. It's a game where when you're in it, you're in it. Like it's uh I think that a lot of the people who um didn't get into it it definitely you definitely need to be in the mood. And you definitely there's definitely a turning point, I would say, where if you didn't pass this turning point in the storyline and you didn't like it then you probably won't like it which is fine like some people don't want such a like methodical game but Mm -hmm. damn i just love how different this game was like aside from just everything we know about oh there's so much to do blah 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 um this game is so different from red dead one and it it falls in line with who the main character is because it's like John Marsden in Red Dead 1 is the guy who was an outlaw and wants to live a better life. Whereas this game is very much, you had a guy who ha- with a life, but the life he chooses is the outlaw life. Mm-hmm. And it's so nice just seeing how everything unfolds. And... I loved all the side care. I really liked all the characters in this game. Shout out to my favorite side character of the game, Lenny Summers, who is the best. He's the best. <laughs> so okay, much fun okay. seeing his um, friendship with Arthur. He's so he's so awesome. Oh, uh, nice. one thing I wanted. To, so kind of a little bit going off tangent, but uh, one one of my favorite missions of the game is when Arthur and Lenny. Um, it's the first time that you get introduced to Lenny. I think. And you go into a bar, and the and you're supposed to go into a bar because you're eventually you're trying to like plan like a robbery or do something, but instead you guys get really drunk, and the entire mission is Lenny keeps running away from you, and you're just <laughs> trying to find him. And Arthur Morgan is just like Lenny. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> yeah. But, anyways, yes, my favorite game of 2018 is Red Dead Two. Hey. Hey. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Good choice. It's a very hard year, though. <laughs> yeah, this is a very difficult year to choose games on the list. I mean, I had to cut some things out, but... But, yes. Good games. Good games of 2018. 2019 is going to bring more good games and looking forward to it. And yeah, me t- me too. Yeah, and then 2019 is we'll probably find out exactly what the new consoles are going to be like. Oh, that's going to be crazy. I know. And we're going to see at least some like proof of concepts. Yep. Uh, it's just, you know, everything is going to be VR ready. Yeah. Everything is going to have 4K something. Yeah. Um yeah, no. Uh, other than that, looking forward to hearing more about Animal Crossing, um hearing more about Ghost of Tsushima and Sekiro. Uh, games like that so we'll see we'll see what happens yay and then apparently death stranding actually comes out next year too 
Yeah, supposedly, and hopefully Kingdom Hearts 3 also comes out in January next year. Oh, Kingdom Hearts 3 is for sure going to come out in January next year. Whether or not you're excited for it is a different question, but... Yeah, 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 we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Judgment comes out next year. Yeah. Yep. Um. Yeah, I won't say that next year is going to be an easy year because <laughs> yeah. where did that take us? Never say never. Yep. In terms of just like what I want to do for the end of December, I want to um, just finish Persona 3 uh, and I'm going to play more Superstar BTS and maybe I will start God of War. Hey, there you go. I know. And then definitely Stardew Valley. Yeah, no, let me know when you start that, and uh, we could do a little farm. Yes, yes, definitely. I have it all downloaded, everything. Now that I got my main storyline game out of the way of 2018, it should be a very chillaxing rest of the year. For sure. Yes. For sure. I'm hoping to complete Sonic Mania, not by December, but just in the next couple months. Yeah. Um, Okami, I need to complete Okami. Um, and. Uh, Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight's on my list as well to complete. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. Yeah, so I I have a few Switch games that I, I need to finish before going full into 2019's games list. But yeah, no, all the games that I mentioned before, from Red Dead to Fallout, I do want to pick up at some point in my life and play them. Definitely. But for now, for now, they're just, you know, weathered dreams. So we'll see. For sure. Yeah, um... Uh, and back to your point about Discord, if you would like to join our Stardew Valley journey and you own Stardew Valley for the PC, you can come follow our Discord where I started a little Stardew Valley uh, channel and you can come talk to us about Stardew Valley. But not just that, go to our website, www.downtime.live, read our blog, click on the left side to join our Discord, talk to us about video games. We usually respond almost immediately. Um... Ask us questions, leave us a review on Apple Music, iTunes, we'll read it on the podcast. You can contact us the old-fashioned way at contact at downtime.live to ask us a question, leave us a review, comment on any of our YouTube videos, and uh, we will read it on the podcast. Hey! Um, That's it. Any closing words before we close out 2018, Alisa? This is officially the last episode of 2018 for downtime podcast but we um we're gonna take our holiday break and we will be back on january 14th yep so yeah that's it yeah thank you everyone thank you everyone for listening to the 85th episode of downtime podcast i hope you have Have a a great great new year Yeah. Happy New Year, everyone. Ha- Merry, Merry, uh, ha- Merry, Happy Holidays and have a new, have a great New Year. Yes. Whether you go out to party or you're just chilling at the house watching TV, have a great day. Do your thing. Have a great holidays. See you guys in 2019. Peace.